Mi goreng waffle. I thought, hey, will this waffle? We have a whole box of these, so I decided to experiment and see if it'll turn out to be a good waffle. What do you think? Will it turn out to be an okay waffle? To make sure it actually binds together, I decided to use an egg. People put egg as topping on their instant noodles all the time anyway, so I thought, might as well put it in the waffle. Oh, and guess what? I got another waffle iron. A teeny one with waffle print. And I somehow decided that the very first thing I make in here was gonna be instant noodles. I promise I'll make semi-normal waffles in here next time. Let me know if you have any cool ideas. Okay, so for the first waffle, I put it in there for about five minutes or maybe a bit longer. I wanted it to crisp up as much as it could. For the second waffle, I only put it in there for like two minutes, just long enough for the egg to fully cook. I wanted to see which one would have better texture. So, final verdict. The one that was cooked in two minutes had a gummier texture, kind of like soggy bread. And the one that was cooked for five minutes or longer had a nicer, crispier texture, just as expected. This is my favorite instant ramen recipe, part 12. I'm part of an epic ramen series where me and a bunch of other food content creators share our favorite ramen recipes. For my recipe, I'm making it for two. This is mine and Doug's go-to ramen recipe for when we need to eat within 10 minutes. The full recipe is on the blog. I cycle through different bases, but one of the main flavors I use is miso. I just add as much paste as I need until it reaches the saltiness level that I like. Miso already has so much flavor, I don't really need anything else. Then we add protein, typically shrimp, because it cooks in a minute, and fish cake. I took them out of the pot so they don't overcook. I typically just throw everything in here, but I'm trying to make it all nice for all of you watching. As for greens, kale is fantastic in soups. And finally, the noodles. They're fresh and they really are instant. They cook in one minute. We can add some sesame seeds or togarashi when we wanna get fancy, and that's it. Now I'm curious to see what my buddy is gonna make for his ramen recipe. Why would you order slimy food? Because it's delicious. The first time I ordered this was at an Okinawan restaurant on top of a bed of rice with thick slices of raw salmon. I had no idea this was gonna be slimy. But I'm always excited to try something new, so I dug in. And I'd been looking for it at other restaurants ever since. Doug and I went back to this restaurant because I saw that they served this mountain yam called Yamaimo. FYI, the mountain yam is the white topping in this bowl. I think it's called Tororo when grated. Yeah, it makes the whole dish kind of slimy, but it also makes it kind of refreshing. There's a bright, kind of neutral flavor that it adds, but at the same time, it makes the noodles tastier too. Basically, this stuff is magic. The mentaiko in here, aka marinated cod roe, brings in that seafood flavor, and then you just can't stop eating this. The mentaiko is the orange topping, by the way. Would you give either of these a try? They're both really tasty. I recommend trying them at least twice. Guess what I'm gonna eat with this? Take a wild guess. Originally, I was just gonna put an egg on top of this, but I remembered seeing somebody, maybe it's one of my parents or maybe one of my grandparents, eating their instant noodles with this thing that I'm gonna show you in a bit. I'm making Pancit Canton, which is a popular Filipino instant noodle brand. This one is a calamansi flavor, which is my favorite because it's tangy and salty. It's a dry noodle and it comes with a seasoning packet plus an oil packet and what seems like a soy sauce packet. My siblings and I used to eat this a lot after school and they're pretty great on their own. But as promised, Try it with this. Yeah, we're making a instant ramen sandwich. Also, my sound got messed up, so I'm gonna be talking over myself talking. You can eat the toast on the side, you can put it on just one slice of toast, or you can sandwich it together. Honestly, this was pretty good. You get a little bit of sweetness from the bread, which contrasts the tanginess and saltiness from the pancit canton. Try it at home, let me know what you think. What is Simon? I didn't hear about this noodle soup until my boyfriend introduced me to his family in Hawaii. Apparently, they ate saimin for breakfast or for a late night snack. I was puzzled by my first bowl of saimin. It reminded me of ramen, but the broth was clear and light, and it was served with cha siu pork and fish cake. Very simple. I kind of got the vibe that it was a blend of Japanese and Chinese cultures, which makes sense being in Hawaii. Don't let the clear broth fool you. Simon broth is super flavorful for how simple it looks. So how I see it is if you want something like ramen and Chinese noodle soup with a lighter broth, go for a bowl of Simon. By the way, this Simon that I'm making is not typically what you'd see in Hawaii. These are just ingredients that we have at home. I don't know any spots in California that serve Simon, but we grab ours at the local Japanese store in the frozen section. Ooh, this was the best Simon I had. It was in Kauai. What other noodles should I try for the noodle series? 
Maybe you've had traditional Japanese ramen, but did you know that Filipino ramen exists? My friend Food With Me recommended Ramo Ramen in London. They had these incredible scallops with bagaong, which is a shrimp paste, and it's sprinkled with calamansi, which is a little sour citrus fruit. If we weren't ordering ramen, I definitely would have ordered a second round. So for the ramen, we decided to order the kare kare and sinigang ramen. Kare kare is an oxtail stew with a thick, savory peanut base, and oh, Oh my gosh, this one was so yummy. It tasted like they mixed maybe tonkatsu broth with a kare kare sauce and oh, I just couldn't stop eating it. Sinigang is a sour stew which typically uses a tamarind base. Their sinigang ramen isn't as sour as the sinigang I'm used to, but I still think the broth was really good. And there's a little bit of heat to it too, it's a little spicy. If you went here, which one would you have picked? Yeah, I'm a few years late, but I was finally able to try the chapaguri or ramdon from Parasite, thanks to you. It's a mix of chapagetti and neoguri instant noodles. Fairly simple, not sure why it took me this long to try it. I was debating whether or not to use really pricey meat, but I just didn't feel right about it. I guess that was the whole message about the dish. The family had the means to use high quality steak on the instant noodles. But I'm not about to cook high quality steak for the first time to use on this dish. Maybe after I make like 20 steaks. With Lisa's help, we picked out a moderately priced steak that I could practice on. And you know what? It was still pretty tasty. It looks just like in the movie, minus like the super pricey beef. First of all, I've never had like either of these noodles on their own before, so I don't really know how each of them tastes separately, but when I tried this, it's really nice. Like it's not too spicy. I like it. It doesn't taste like how I thought it would taste in the movie, but this is still pretty good. I don't really know what I was expecting to taste though. Spicy belt noodles. They're called biang biang noodles, and apparently they're called that because of the sound that the noodles make when they're stretched out and slapped against the table. They're hand pulled noodles, but what do they taste like? And are they better than thin noodles? Yeah, there's no such thing as better. It just depends on your mood. So you'd want to get these noodles if you want like a mouthful of noodles. It's not the easiest thing to slurp up for sure, but it's kind of satisfying having big bites of noodles to chew on. Bonus points for the al dente texture. Is there a term for al dente in Chinese cuisine? Also, the flavors were super tasty. I believe the noodles and the flavors are an ode to Xi'an, which is a city in China. We got the Mapo Tofu Dry Mix, and it's like not too spicy, but you can taste the peppers in there, and you've got so much savory action with each bite. Oh, it's just so easy to eat, it was so good. Here's a seafood noodle soup dish for anyone who's too lazy to chop anything up right now. You're gonna need some kind of broth. I keep chicken, fish, or veggie stock in the pantry. And then some simple seasonings like salt and pepper. I decided to add a teensy splash of fish sauce, soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, and white pepper. But to be honest, keeping it super simple is also really good. I was just feeling a little extra this day. Then a protein that's super simple and fast to cook. Doug and I usually have shrimp in the freezer and some form of fish cake or fish balls. Fresh noodles are lifesavers, either the ones that are refrigerated or frozen because they only take one minute to cook. That's so fast. And then you just boil. To be honest, this is the longest part of this recipe, just waiting for the water or stock to boil. The shrimp and fish cakes only take about a few minutes to cook, but I take the shrimp out earlier because they cook a lot quicker. And like I mentioned, the noodles are like a minute. Ooh, and don't forget your veggies. We try to have it in almost every meal. I have plenty of days where I'm short on time. How do these noodles float? I resisted ordering these because I thought it was all looks, but this restaurant looked promising. This is their signature flying noodle and I shall lift the veil of this illusion for you. Oh. And the stalls are so good. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> that makes sense. So yeah, it's basically held up by a pole, but is it good? Heck yeah, the meat was so savory, flavorful, and creamy. And the noodles have got these little ripplies on the edges, which gives it a nice texture. Oh, and it's also springy and chewy when you bite it. But I'm also just as happy getting their beef noodle soup. The noodles weren't floating, but my soul was because it was so good. Would you get the dry flying noodles or would you get this beef noodle soup? In this noodle series, I have to show pancit, which are Filipino noodles that so many people love and rave about. The way I make it is not traditional, but when I served it during our family party during 4th of July, my dad told me it was probably the best pancit he's tried. To be honest, making pancit it is 
pretty easy. My recipe just requires a lot of ingredients because I like to have a bunch of veggies and meat in the pancit so that I can serve it as a meal in itself. You could simplify it by not adding as many vegetables and meat if it's your first time making it. I like to make pancit with a little more liquid than traditional pancit so it's more flavorful and doesn't end up feeling dry. I also put lemon or calamansi straight into the pancit because I realized that when I've given pancit to my friends or co-workers in the past, they don't know that they should add the citrus into the pancit, so I just do it for them. Do you have any other noodle ideas I can try? Is it worth it to try these green tea soba noodles? I found these at our local Japanese grocery store and it was a few dollars more compared to plain soba noodles. I love green tea, so I thought I'd try it. While I was cooking the soba and adding the fish cake, eggs, and other toppings, I could really smell the green tea. I would recommend trying these noodles with ingredients that don't have strong flavors. Otherwise, you really lose the green tea flavor. I did pour a soba sauce on top of the noodles, but to be honest, soba sauce isn't even that strong of a flavor. It smelled like green tea, but now I can't really taste it. I can't really tell. Did you know pho satay existed? This was at our local pho restaurant. I'm used to pho with lighter broth, and this pho satay was thick and hearty, served with rice noodles, of course. It's kind of on the sweeter side, not that spicy, and super filling. If you love peanut-based sauces and have a big appetite, try it out. What other noodles should I try? Next in the noodle series are these creamy soy milk noodles. This is konguksu, and we went out to get it at a local Korean spot after watching one of Mang Chi's cooking videos. This is one of my favorite cold noodles. It's creamy, kind of like Alfredo sauce, but without the stomach pain that dairy gives me. And listen to how thick and gloopy it is. This is one of my favorite cold noodle soups to eat during summertime to cool down. It's also fun because I can add salt to my liking. What other noodles should I try next? <laughs> Biriya ramen isn't what I expected. I remember seeing biriya ramen everywhere a few years ago and I finally tried it. Okay, but first, what's biriya ramen? So biriya is a Mexican stew or soup that's cooked over low heat and it's originally made with goat meat, but it could also be made with other meats. At this spot, they use beef. And I've typically seen birria put in tacos, at least at the taco spots near me. Now for birria ramen, I thought I'd get it served in like a separate bowl with noodles from the restaurant. Nope, they serve it with instant noodles. At this spot, I could choose between the nongshim tonkatsu or shin ramyun. And then I guess they just pour the hot broth with the meats inside. The other thing I didn't expect is for it to taste a lot lighter? I thought it'd be like oily and super salty, but no. It was like having comforting homemade beef stew. Hi, Dodo. Hi. <laughs> She's just like, wow. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with this dish. Naughty. Please someone say they know where that's from. There's times when I want to eat something that gives me that same feeling of skipping school or waking up and playing video games first thing in the morning or binge watching a show on my bed until the sun sets. That food for me is instant noodles. My family told me that we shouldn't be eating instant noodles for lunch or dinner since it's not the healthiest option. But when they weren't watching, my siblings and I would cook up like eight packs of this Filipino instant noodle called pancit canton. Now that I'm older, I still feel a little bit of guilt when I want to reach into our instant noodle stash. So whenever Doug and I want to eat instant noodles, there's a kind of standoff in the kitchen to see who caves first. Which one is going to own up to the idea of eating instant noodles for a meal? Yes, let's pin the blame on them. But then both of us get super giddy when we make it together. However, we always got to throw some protein or veggies in there.
would you rather have broth or no broth in your noodles for the rest of your life? Just humor me because I have a really tough time with this whenever I visit a noodle restaurant. When Doug and I visited this spot called Bath Noodle here in the UK, they served both dry noodles and noodles with broth. I kinda had a tough time deciding which one I wanted to get. Oh wait, no, let's be real. It was drizzling outside, it was cold, hot broth was kind of a no-brainer. But if it was the perfect weather outside, it's really a coin flip for me. There are some really spectacular dry noodles, from Filipino pancit to Indonesian mie goreng. However, the more I think about it, I definitely have ordered a lot more noodles with broth. Vietnamese pho, Japanese ramen, and this spicy braised beef noodle soup. Yum! It's so much better than the beef noodle soups near us at home. Oh yeah, comfort food is so good. And I think a large reason why I go with soup noodles is because each sip of broth feels like a warm hug, and each bite reminds me of eating with my family. What about you? In high school, a stranger baked me a cake for my birthday. It was a beautiful and simple pink cake. Kind of reminds me of the cake that Hagrid gave Harry on his birthday, but a lot neater. She just walked up to me during our lunch break with a pink cake in her arms and said, Happy birthday! We both hung around the same circle of friends, but up until that day, we didn't know each other. We didn't talk. I still remembered looking at the cake and thinking, if this person cared so much to bake a cake for me, we're definitely gonna be friends. Almost every day after school, we'd get Arizona green teas and honey wheat pretzel sticks. When we weren't doing that, she'd take us to her parents' restaurant to eat freshly cooked Cambodian Chinese food. Her dad was the one who gave us the Cambodian style hot pot broth that was simmered for hours in another video. And nowadays, you can find us eating egg noodles after she gets out of work. She's probably the only person from high school that I still talk to and hang out with to this day. Crazy what food can do.